I'm thinking this is about the time in the journey that you get a reward for all the risk taken. I wonder if this is how the Vikings turned up back home, other than the plastic container, they would have come back with a crockery pot. The Vikings have been out collecting the honey and the honeycomb and a few stray bees are still on board. And I thought, here we go, let's bit of a shout out to our Norwegian brothers and we're going to make some mead. So now for the very slow process of getting the honey from this pot into the brew pot. I don't know whether we might throw a little bit of honeycomb in there as well, just for a bit of flavour. I've got a few other bits and pieces. I'm going to put some ginger and some lemon peel and a bit of cinnamon, maybe some cloves. So I'm going to make sort of a Nordic health honey drink. And of course, the best part of that health drink is going to be the fact it's got alcohol in it. So hey, let's have a crack at it, shall we? Here we go. We're going to get out. I've got myself a little bit of a leftover from when I was making homebrew. So if you don't happen to have one of these, you can do it in a jar, I guess, with an air trap. But we've got to get our honey in here for a start. So here we go. I reckon there's no rocket science involved here. I don't mind if I get a little bit of all of the honeycomb and the bits and pieces in here. So I'm going to run the first lot of honey off. Then we'll come back and we'll give it a bit of a jab around and get some more out of there. This might take a little while. I'm not sure if you're going to get to see the whole process, but you know, you'll get to, you'll get to see what it's all going through the, the, what is it called? The maturation, I think that's what it's called when it's brewing. <laughs> but you can Google those terms. So here we go. We'll open our valve and see what happens. <sighs> Something running. <laughs> it's a bit cool. Maybe we'll have to put a heat mat under there. Well, there's a bit of golden goodness. Look at that, I tell you what. It doesn't get much more natural than that. Straight from the fish tank to the brewing tank. I tell you what, I tell you what, I don't know. What would that make it? Would that make it fish tank mead? We might not be in a Vikings great hall, but we're going to have a crack at making something that's a, sort of akin to what the Vikings used to make. I've decided to make a bit more of a medical version of the mead, so I'm going to put some ginger and some cinnamon and some cloves in our mix. I'm going to brew it up, and then I reckon we're going to have ourselves a nice healthy drink. And if all else, well, you know what, at least if it's got some alcohol and warms you up, you won't be able to feel the pain anyway, so it'll be all good. So we've got myself some ginger down the... Sh I'm not much of a Viking, I had to go down to the supermarket and buy some ginger. <laughs> I like in ginger and honey, that goes together, yum. I a little bit of ginger honey where we've soaked the ginger in the honey, and that's really yummy. So I figure a bit of ginger in my mead should be amazing. So, oh, and some lemons I reckon I'm going to stick in there, at least some lemon peel anyway. So we'll just dice this roughly up. So I figure if you throw a whole lump of ginger in there, it's not really going to release much flavour, is it? Oh, that smells amazing. I wish there was smell of vision This is good. Huh. I often wonder with food, though, how the hell would we decide that this was a good thing to do? I mean, ginger grows under the ground. What the hell were our ancestors doing digging around under there? I guess, I guess if you're starving to death, you'll eat bloody anything, won't you? So we'll chuck them in there. That's a bit of yumminess. And then I reckon a few cinnamon sticks would be good. I can get the packet open. I was just wondering, where is, it? is cinnamon a... Now, there's a very good question. Is cinnamon some sort of crazy plant that grows and turns into these little cigars? Or what's the story? Or are they like sheets that they roll up? <laughs> oh, let go. You're a little toughy. Maybe one more for luck. A little bit of lemon peel, so we get that organised, put some of that in there. Now, yeah, try not to get too much of this pith, we don't want that pith. That white muck doesn't actually taste good. So you want to get, don't really want that in the mixture. I was reading up about a bit of mead making when it was in the Viking days, and they used to collect flowers to get the pollen from the flowers which would create the yeast or some wild berries that had yeast on it, and then that would actually be how they'd get the thing to start fermenting. But of course, being that we're in a modern civilization, I'm going to cheat and just use some actual yeast. But if we weren't, 
you could go out and find yourself some unitage berries that were fresh and not actually and had their little bit of mold on them it's not really mold it's sort of a natural yeast that the plant produces so as it can turn into alcohol which is how our ancestors figured out how to get shit face because i think things just went rotten and then they went well we're jolly thirsty anyway even if it tastes like muck we'll still drink it then they were i think they would have found out that yes it didn't taste real flash but heck we feel good until they woke up in the morning and there's a that was a bad idea now i'm not sure whether i should put the lemon juice in or not the recipe said to put the lemon juice in but i'm not really sure because i'm not think whether the acid will counteract the jolly yeast so i'm thinking i'm gonna add the lemon juice afterwards feel free to put a comment in the comments and let me know about your mead making skills i'm on a mead making website and there's all sorts of options seems to be a little bit like beekeeping is as well you can kind of make it up a little bit as you go I'll just what I will say is I'm experimenting that's what it is isn't it that's what you say I am just having a try righty oh that smells good a little bit of clover I reckon clover's always good that always adds a bit of kick to everything very well measured here right I think that's good we got some what well, I've got the jug on now this is a critical decision. I think we're gonna go and do the mixing in the outdoor area because the wife was giving me a rev a little while ago about the fact that there's honey on the handles. So as you would remember, the last couple of episodes we've been playing around with converting our fish tank into a proper jolly beehive. And of course, you can imagine, blokes been walking through the house and so there's a few sticky door handles and I just noticed as I came down the staircase that there's honey on the blooming pole in the, in the stairwell. So I better wipe that off before she gets home. Anyway, I'm thinking we're gonna go outside to do the mixing because I still value my testicles. Groovy dooby dooby. I might tip the boiling water in with our ingredients. I reckon that will stir them up a bit. That's a slack way to boil them, isn't it? <laughs> we'll boil another jug and then we'll get some water. We'll be all into it. Um, here we go. Look out. Oh. I had one of our fans send me a jolly um, Viking drinking horn. So if this works out, we'll have to have a bit of a drink through it <laughs> and find out. I don't know where it actually, we did that and I don't know where the footage went because something happened with one of the chips. But anyway, you never know, I haven't forgotten and here we go, we'll have another try at making some mead. Hopefully when we bottle this lot up, I'm not quite as messed up as I was when I wandered down the cellar steps that time. Oh, I don't know what episode that was, but it was a big day and I had had a few too many schlucks before I got to the bottling department. So I'll try to be a better behaved beekeeper this time, but you know, in the heart of the Viking, what the hell? <laughs> cool, and I'll just put some more hot water in here to rinse out the leftover bits. And then we'll have to stir it all up. Hopefully we can get it to dissolve. <laughs> Golly gosh. Boy, they're blooming honeys everywhere. Look at this. It's all stuck on the edge. <laughs> Watch me get that all down my shirt. Now yeah, we've just got to stir our honey around a bit so we can dissolve everything. I mean, I'm guessing it'll, it'll probably, the yeast will eventually eat it in the, anyway, but it is just what I normally do if I'm making it with sugar. I have to dissolve the sugar, so I'm assuming you have to dissolve the honey, but I don't know. Anything's, anything's possible. <laughs> starting to loosen up a bit. You normally have to do that when you're dissolving your sugar with a bit of hot water and get that organized. So I'm assuming honey's the same deal. I'm sounding like an expert here, aren't I? But no, I'm not claiming to be an expert mead maker by any stretch of the imagination. I'm probably an expert alcohol consumer, but that's nothing to do with making it. Very good point. I've got a first prize here for my mead making. I'd made a, I actually made a mead beer that actually had a bit of fizz so it was like quite interesting when the judges opened it because it wasn't cold enough. So they had to be a bit careful, but that's a really nice drop. And I also made some mead that the wife uses in the shaving cream, which is kind of cool because it has a tiny little bit of alcohol. So when you shave, you don't have to worry about aftershave. It's just already sealed your skin off and killed any of the bugs and leaves your skin all beautiful and yummy. Head over to the website and grab some of that because Myself, personally, I get all the tins that aren't quite full, so you know, I'm a lucky fella. But you get some with some cool looking stickers and all the really love that my wife puts into it for you. So give it a try. We've got some rave reviews about it on, on the website. Not bad, there's only a little bit in this corner over here that I can feel. I reckon that's coming along pretty nice. 
<laughs> That's what I'm going to be like when I drink it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Well, that's cool. We'll just go and get some cool water. Top it up. Get up to about the handle, I reckon. That's where I normally put it, so then it can bubble up a bit. Just wait there. <laughs> All right, this should about do it, I reckon. Let's have a look at whether we've got any temperature gauge going on here. It's not real warm, but I got a heat mat as you can see. So from my other brewing experiences, so that'll warm it up anyway. We'll just have to wait. I've got to go and get another one now. I thought that would have done. Cooly dooly dooly. The last little bit up to that line, which is about right. Groovy. Now I'm going to give it some yeast. I found some turbo yeast, which is actually for spirits, but ah well, you, you can use wine yeast. You can't really use um, beer yeast because it'll bloom and not the alcohol in here will kill the yeast before it gets finished. So this is probably going to be a bit overkill, but I was just thinking I might add some more honey as we go along and I might turn it into a honey port yet. Who, who knows? You just have to come back and find out what happens. Now I can't get the bag open. Now, if you're following along at home, you've got to make sure your pot's not too hot. Our pot's actually too cold, so nothing's going to happen straight away, but it'll soon warm up. You're going to add your yeast, if your temperature's right. Now, just give that a little stir, until that sort of just starts to activate. Hopefully, it's not a waste of good honey. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be yummy, though. But we'll find out later on. And then you want yourself a little lid. You need yourself an airlock, so is it the... Gas can come up through here and out there, and the bad bugs can't get into your, uh, into your mixture. Pop this on here so everybody can get sealed up. Now, if you're really keen and you're gonna make it this too crazy, you leave your lid a little bit loose for the first explosion, but I don't think this is gonna explode, because sometimes you can come back and this thing will be bubbled its butt off and you don't know where you are. Look at that, it's already gonna start getting excited. Or maybe it's just farting. Well, that's about all we can do for this minute. Now all there is is patience, patience and patience, and a little bit more of that stuff. This will probably take at least a couple of weeks. I mean, it, ultimately it doesn't matter as long as you wait for it to finish fermenting, especially if you want it to be a stilled mead. If you want a bit of actually to have it, so it's like, like the other time, you can always add a little bit of extra sugar in your bottle and then you'll get a bit of fizz in your drink. But I'm trying to make a flat mead out of this lot. So we'll come back in a couple of weeks and we'll rack it off and hopefully we'll have a win. I mean, I might change it around until I get to the bottling stage. Hopefully John's here to watch us bottle it up or I'll probably wait for you to turn up so I can bottle it up. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the show, write some comments down here in the comment section. Like, clip, subscribe, tell everybody else to come over and watch us and then you can all sit around and drink some mead yourselves and discuss what I did wrong. Cool, catch you on the next episode.